I'm Catherine Saunders. I'm an academic research optometrist based at Ulster University. And I studied with Maggie Woodhouse many years ago in Cardiff. And the two of us developed an interest in looking at accommodative function in young children and children with special educational needs. This is the Ulster Cardiff Cube. Essentially you've got a, a target and we have a variety of pictures or you can change it to have letters and numbers for an older child or an adult. There's lots of different degrees of detail in the different pictures. So for a young baby who has poor vision, you'd maybe use the um, bullseye target. But for most of my patients, I'm using a more detailed target. You're setting this at a certain distance and you want to see if the child is focusing on that distance. And it means that I can measure exactly where the child's eyes are focusing while they're looking at the target. So they might be telling me about the fish and that they're blowing bubbles and that one's got zigzags on and one's stripy. And I can look with my retinoscope and I can decide without them having to tell me anything apart from what they're, they're looking at, is where they're focused. Are they accurate? Are they on the target? Or are they behind the target? Or are they in front of the target? You know they're not on the target because of the ret reflex that you get, the re reflex from your retinoscope. If they're accurately on the target and your ret is next to the target, you see a neutral response. And you check that in both meridians. And I would normally go and check it in both eyes as well, so I'd cross over to the other side and look at the other eye. If you see a with movement, then you know that they're focused behind the target. And with movement, it's easy to see you move back until you find neutral that's where they're focused if it's an against movement when you're at the target they're overly focusing they've got an accommodative lead we call that I mean a two-year-old is not going to be able to tell you if I bring this up and say when does it become blurred as I bring it closer um, they're going to be licking it they're not going to tell you anything useful. Um, a child with communication difficulties or an adult with communication difficulties might not be able to tell you what, whether something's becoming blurry. Um, or they might have cognitive impairment and not be able to understand the question. So this is objective and that's the, the benefit for me in my practice with young children and kids with special needs. In a visually normal, typically developing school child, you would expect a, a normal range. Um, if I set this target at four diopters or 25 centimeters. Most children will have a normal range within this area here that's marked on the ruler. So I know that if my ret, when I see neutral, if it's within that normal band, if it's in that band that's marked on the ruler, I know it's normal. And if I have to go beyond the band, then it's, an, it's not a normal response, which makes it really quick for me just to look down. So I'm, I'm looking at the, the child's reflex with my ret, and if I have to move back by this amount, I can look down and go, oh, well, that's within the normal limit, so that's okay. If I'm moving way back here, well, that's not within the normal limit. They've got a reduced level of accommodation, but always check that they're still looking at the target. That's really important. If you get a with movement and you move back and back and back, it may be that they're looking at the light, so you need to check that they're still looking at the target. It's called not retinoscopy and the reason we need a tool to use that technique like the Ulster Cardiff Cube is it gives us normative data so we're able to make a measurement and then compare against normative data to say whether that measurement was normal or not normal and that's a really nice thing to be able to do when you're testing a child's eyes and you're making lots of measurements and you want to be able to identify yep they need some help with this function or actually they're managing fine. Looking at accommodative deficits is absolutely vital in children with special educational needs because they're much more likely to have those problems. They're not likely to report them. People are expecting them to fail educationally and visually anyway. So, you know, if they don't do well, they're not looking to see whether it's because they can't see well. They're just saying, well, that child has a learning disability, so maybe that's why they're failing. So it's absolutely vital for them. I also find it really useful when testing typically developing children who are much less likely to have an accommodative deficit, but it helps inform me about how much plus they might need in their glasses. So for a long-sighted child, they may well have really good focusing at near, even without glasses. Um, they may be struggling at near without glasses, and those two different situations help me inform whether or not that child will be more proactive about prescribing the prescription or maybe hold off for a while. It's a really useful tool, not just for the special needs clinics. I think it's a really useful tool for primary care practice as well. And people who hadn't used it in the past but then started using it in their practice, really they sort of came back to me and said, this has made all the difference to my decision making. And I think once you get used to it and once you think about why it's working, it can be really helpful. I think a lot of people, um, and hopefully more so in the past, but not absolutely in the past, it's really easy to explain failure if you have a learning disability. Um, and if you can't articulate that actually I can't see that thing, 
So yeah, I'm confusing a cat with a dog, but that's because I can't see them, not because I have a learning disability. Whereas if a typically developing child kept confusing a cat with a dog, you'd be thinking, there might be something wrong with their vision. Um, so so one of the guys in the workshop was asking me about prescribing bifocals to kids with Down syndrome and special needs. And he said, well, you know, I'm not sure they really need them because when they touch the target, that their focus improves and they get more accurate. And I said, well, but if a typically developing child doesn't have to touch the target to get accurate focus, why are you making a higher hurdle for someone with a learning difficulty? They're running a marathon with a backpack on anyway. You're adding a pair of stilettos. That's just making it even harder for them. Why would you do that? There's no harm in giving them a bifocal. It's not coming out of your own pocket or their pocket. It's not going to do them any harm visually. And it could make all the difference to their learning. So.